Welcome back to Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists. This week on the show, they see life and bring it to us. That's right. This week, we're talking to documentarians. Documentarians of all types. We gather around a table to talk, process of storytelling and showing the truth. So let's turn on the camera towards ourselves for a change. And let's think about what that does. Mm. It's time to get introspective in a real world. So let's buckle up and listen in. Wow, this is so great. I never saw myself like being in a room like this with all of you guys. This is actually really cool for me. Really wonderful to be here with all of you. Really, really nice. I, I think your work is really fine. It's really fantastic and it's really exciting to be here together. Incredible company we are amongst. It feels like a table of legends. <laughs> exactly. Well, I would love to like get to know you guys on the mic. So do you want to start? Sure, yeah. Uh, my name is Ron Wold. Uh, I have, I don't know, six or seven Oscars, not counting. But I'm a documentarian, been doing it for a long time. I'm a historian. And my new documentary, The History of Posters, in 12 parts is coming out pretty soon. So I really, I dived into when posters began and where they went. And I'm really excited about it. Wow, that sounds mega interesting maybe. Thanks. That's so cool, man. Thanks. Yeah. I think it's riveting and fascinating because they hang on the wall, but why? That is the question. Yeah. And we answer it in a bit. You know, we don't give it all away, but we definitely pause it. Why? Sure, you shouldn't be answering questions. You should be asking them. And you should always pause it. I believe that is one of the cornerstones of documentary filmmaking is to pause it something. Pause? Pause, pause it. it. Pause the TV, pause no, it. POS. No, to pause it a question. Everyone raise your hand if you pause it things in your documentaries. I pause all the time. Mm. I say pause that right there. Pause it. Yeah, I think so. If I'm following the logic, I feel like I know what it means. Totally. Yeah. Wow. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Liam Michaels. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> really happy to be here. I, um, I think I'm here for uh, my best award-winning work. Um, I did a little Netflix series called Sales. Uh, where we followed middle school sale teams um, to their championships all the way in Costa Rica. It was incredible. Changed my life. We did uh, two seasons. We're now on to three seasons, our third season, I should say. Um, and uh, I'm just I'm 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 grateful to be an artist, but to be overcome by art. Wow. So it's like a reality TV doc kind of thing. Yeah, we just expose these kids for who they are and what they do. Oh, are these kids bad? <laughs> no, no, no. I would say we expose in a, in, in a positive sense. You... I'm exposing these children for their heroicism, their ambition, and their souls. I have to admit, I have to admit, sales is a guilty pleasure for me and my lady kitty. We love... We love sales. We watch it all the time. Thank you so much. I yeah, I went up I came I come from the reality TV world, I should say that. Um and I stumbled into documentarianism. Yeah. That's great. I love the belief of documentarianism. I think it's a fantastic belief. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I pray For at the sure. altar. Yeah. I pray at that altar. Yeah. Pray yeah. at the altar of documentarianism. Absolutely. My name is Augusto Spoons. <laughs> I am a documentary filmmaker, recently nominated for a Critics' Choice Award for my documentary, Spoons. It in, in, in which this documentary, I place the camera betwixt myself and my soul. I get into a glass box, lock myself inside, and sit there for 60 days. My documentary is an examination of what happens to a man when you do that. Okay, have you showered since? Because I was going to say something. It reeks over here. It no, I will not shower until I win the Critics' Choice Award. 
I also think that might also be a, a wave of me. I've been sailing with the kids. I think we all reek. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. My, uh, d- uh, flies die in my editing bay. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I am a stinky guy. As documentarians, we spend a lot of time just staring at the screen. Yeah, totally. Not you're trying time. to you're looking through footage after footage after footage like hours yeah. of it. Yeah, I'll so, be in my my casket watching footage. So Augusto, so would you consider your documentary interpretive or performance art or what part of it makes it a documentary? I would say that it is the truth. What is a documentary if not displaying things as they are? And in my documentary, I show myself breaking myself to the limits of what a man can endure. 60 days, glass cage filled to the brim with bats. What, what happens to a man? <laughs> Whoa. Oh, you did not have Whoa. that part of the beginning. You should bats you first. Men- you Was really that an with important that. part? <laughs> Was I think so. Would you consider it a situation that altered your experience? Would it have been different without the bats? That sounds like something a studio asked you to add on because the pitch wasn't good enough. You know, I remember the bats being an afterthought. <laughs> it wasn't the primary thing I set out to do, but sometimes you begin a documentary and you begin a project, and then slowly things are added in. Yo. You stumble upon discoveries. That's insane, because that is just like my documentary, actually. Please, tell us more. So, what's up, guys? I'm Kyler Byler. I am a surfer, and I love shooting surf docs. But my recent doc got out of control. It's called The Surfer Murderer. I saw it at Tribeca. Thank you. Did you like it? I absolutely Loved it. Thank you so much. So, yeah, it's crazy. Basically, what happened was we were down kind of traveling all over Thailand and like all looking for the best wave. And it was going to be called that one wave. But then one of my bros got fucking murdered. And then we're just trying to figure out what happened. It's crazy. And how do you know he was murdered versus drowned? No, he was definitely murdered. Like he was on a surfboard and the next minute gone he was murdered in the sea (laughs) on a surfboard yes he was murdered (laughs) in the sea on a surfboard and we know he got killed by somebody so there was a stab wound or he was gone Oh, you couldn't. Oh, so there wasn't a body. <laughs> All we found was his hand. You did so, not have. Okay, so you okay. Can... <laughs> All we could find was his hand. So he got murdered bad. Something went down. So we're trying to figure it out, and that's the beauty of the documentary because it's both filming, uh, looking, filming surfing, but also looking past it. All the footage that I've had over like the last like tw- 12 years surfing with my bros. And wow. we're trying to piece together which one of us killed him. Yeah, no, wow. I, that's what I thought was so interesting about <laughs> watching your movie was that the surfer murderer title is implying that there's another surfer who killed your surfer. Exactly. So you, that was the craziest part to me. Yeah, it's not called the surfer murder. And we had a long debate, me and with the guys, because it's not the surfer murder. Is the surfer murderer? Mm-hmm. Like, and would it not be more accurate to call it surfer murdered? I love that. I wish we thought of that. We just did not have the brain capacity to put that together. Totally, totally. Yeah. You, you, you work with what you got. You I, work with what you got. <laughs> I, I want to point out something you said, just to ask more questions about it. You said that you have to figure out which one of you is the murderer. Yeah. So so you you know that one of you did it? Yeah, well we all suspect, you know. It's a <laughs> What? <laughs> it's a situation. So- There's only a couple of us, us out there. One of us had to do it. Yeah. And so basically it's us looking back in a big room figuring out the pieces, you know. Sometimes like I caught a like one of the uh, most iconic scenes I'm getting rave reviews about. I'm hearing is my buddy Eric Goff. Uh, he was talking to Tutti, and Tutti is the guy that unfortunately got murdered. And Eric Off says, like, dude, you fucking stole my wave out there. And this was six years before Tutti got killed. So we used that, and we were all like, Eric Goff, what was that? And he was like, dude, 
I don't know, maybe I did kill him. So it's riveting. It's very confusing. And it's every really... man believes he could have killed him? Every man understands that they have the capacity to kill him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was so interesting seeing it at Tribeca because the whole true crime community was there and they were like, this doesn't feel like true crime. Yeah. It feels like that something must be different. difficult. I, I'd love to talk a little bit about true crime in this world because it has engulfed documentaries for me somebody who does long form historical topics it's definitely not as sexy how, how do we feel about well, true crime that must taking be actually over really field? tough for you you know like it is tough because i feel like documentaries for a long time were boring history films and not that that's bad i love boredom like boredom is a beautiful thing for me but like that must rock your freaking world it true. doesn't rock my world boredom is subjective i don't think they're really I don't boring, think the movie, man. They're not boring. They're really they're boring, but that's good. I like details. They're exciting to me. When I watch a documentary, when I watch a, a nine-hour documentary about, you know, the history of uh, the, the Korean War, I am screaming, shouting, cheering. For me, that is the most exciting thing of my life. I am enthralled. I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm biting my nails. It, it, I am exhausted. I sleep for a full day. <laughs> after so I watch after it, watching it. After because I am so spent because everything else in my life is boring <laughs> compared to those. Everything else in my life is what boring. What do you do during the days? During the days, I live in my house in Bakersfield. Okay. Um, you said you had a, a lady my cat? My lady. My, no, no, her name is Kitty. She's my wife. I call her my lady. Oh, I thought it was a cat. I did say my lady Kitty, but but her, her she is my lady and her name is Kitty. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Yeah, so me and my lady Kitty, we like to sit in our house in Bakersfield. We like to uh, uh, grow our grass garden, and we like to make different types of aiolis based on things that we can find in the store and see if... Oh, no, Kyler Byler. Kyler Byler. Kyler, uh. arise! Yes, ma'am. I won't Whoa. be intimidated by yawns. No, sorry. You think you're the first person to do Dude, that? I love <laughs> sleep. I love sleep. Answer me. Do you think you're the first person to do that to me? No. What I like isn't boring. What you like is boring. Dude, I I, wow. I like Michael Bay. <laughs> okay. Is that boring? I can tell you everything that happens in a Michael Bay movie based on the first 30 seconds. That's boring to me. I think I, I could say the same thing about your poster movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that a guy invented posters and he just uh, printed them out. I don't want to cannibalize us, guys. I no, don't want to right, I don't right. want to rip each other out. I for and one it, was go ahead. This feels just like my movie. You, there's no way you could have predicted in the 6 hour of my poster documentary when the guy that was making posters ended up on the posters. <laughs> <laughs> could you have predicted that? And that's just one I of say, that's one of the 25 storylines I follow. <laughs> That was a twist I was surprised yeah. by. Yeah. I also would like to compliment your documentary was such an exquisite study of boredom, of mm. what happens when the viewer is exposed to boredom, of what goes on. It was such a statement. I will say, I agree. About the capacity of man. Okay. Yes, I got so much shit done when I watched posters. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> You know that area under your couch that you never clean? Yeah. I cleaned under my couch that part of the area. I also, no, but I was watching your film and I was saying, I think it, I think it's the simplicity of life. Like, listen to me, I'm working on Netflix shit and anytime I think it's done, somebody else comes in there and goes, let's add more music on top of the music. Mm. And I go, do we need more? That's do we need more? And they go, add another montage of the kids setting the sails, mm. add another montage. And I go, Come on, guys, it's about being simple. And when I was watching your poster film, I was like, God, I had nothing else to do but sit around and think about what I could do in the room while watching it. Well, I can't tell if you're mocking me, but I don't envy you. I don't envy you because I get to write all the music for my documentaries. I use wow. my guitar and I, I just go to town <laughs> and I have a blast. I'm not mocking you. I, f I find it very fascinating how okay. simple. Okay. I what can't... kind of aiolis are you and the wife cooking up? We tried one. We did Kit Kat aioli. <laughs> it Is, was, are you just making sauces? What makes it an aioli? Well, the difference between a uh, mayonnaise and aioli is a consistency, I believe, in, and also just the uh, capacity for flavor. Does it not require eggs to qualify as an aioli? 
I like, thought it was the garlic. See, this feels like one of your documentaries. <laughs> no, I never could touch aioli. It's too complex. I couldn't get, I couldn't get the concept in a, a suitable time frame. It would be too long. Wow. Well, that actually leads me to an interesting question about like the length of things, because yes. like, like we're dealing with a lot of time and how to make a story out of all these things. Like with mm-hmm. sales, like you guys are dealing with a lot of things. Like how do you choose what story to follow and what what things to do? Yeah. Well, um, I'm a part of a machine. Um, these kids, they take they take the boat by the horns. So they they're run- children on a boat. So they do competitive sailing. I thought they were selling things. I thought that was the crux. Sailing, sailing, sailing. as in a verb. Yeah, I thought they <laughs> you were following kids as they they sail they sell things. Selling, oh, no. like no, a it's sail. sailing. Crazy, you mix up sail and sell, and you have a film called Surfer Murderer. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so. We, yeah, we follow competitive sailing. And um, I don't know about you guys, because sometimes I'm like, you you follow that man that made the poster, but you yeah. are the you are the center of your doc. I, I I follow the story. If I'm following a year of competitive sailing at St. Mark's Elementary School that isn't um, interesting, that's two years of footage down the drain. But I have oh. to say, I've, I've again, me and my lady Kitty, we watch sales. And it is so interesting. I can't believe some of that stuff happens. The fact that the the long lost sister comes back mm-hmm. after being lost in the accident, and and one of them breaks their femur. There's so much drama. And on these Netflix teams. only devoted about forty five seconds to that storyline. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, when she broke her femur, that took a whole semester of drama, and we whimmed it down to about forty five seconds. You're right. It was just like. She broke her femur out in sea, and boy, was that That's footage really... on footage on. We had we yeah. had because when you're out sea and you have a and you have something go down, you have a lot of taxiing boats come in, and we got all of that footage, and that was just down the drain. Wow, really? That's crazy. It, that how did she break her femur out there? Ah, oh, she fell on her ankle. <laughs> So oh. she fell on her ankle and broke her femur. Yeah, no, it's a <laughs> complex sailing term. When oh. I say she fell on her ankle, oh. which means hmm. she was holding the uh, she was holding the anchor, and when you drop the anchor and you hurt yourself, you um you call it you fell on your ankle. So she uh, to the bottom of the sea. <laughs> so she got caught in the anchor. <laughs> no, she yeah, s- similar to that. Yes. <laughs> You act like this is something that we wouldn't understand, but it feels like we could understand it if you just let us. In what way? So let did you... us in, will you? <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how this. So if I could ex- try to explain it. She fell on her ankle, which is a sailing de- term for getting caught up in the anchor <laughs> and being plunged deep into the ocean so deep that the pressure breaks a femur or something yes, but else. but she rose to the top. Mm. Thank and God. And the only thing that happened, yeah. And get, we only had 45 seconds of that footage, but God, when she slowly rose up and they brought her back to life, her ex-boyfriend, who was on the same sailing team, had to give her mouth to mouth, which was also incredibly cinematic. Wow. Mm. Um, but uh, she she lived to tell the tale. How old are these kids? Oh, uh, we do elementary through high school. Oh, wow. You know what I love too? I love when you followed the lunch lady. It was interesting because I, I didn't know how it quite connected, but it made me realize, well, these kids are eating lunch every day, so technically it was connected, and she was interesting. No, yeah, she's great. She's on Dancing with the Stars now. I saw her. I'm voting for her. Yeah, good. You better be. She oh. has such an incredible whimsy about her as she dances. <laughs> she is really amazing. I really, 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 really hope she wins over Nia from Dance Moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, she did a great job. Um, Dorothy is her name. Yes, she's yeah. amazing. She, uh, who would have thought sandwiches like that don't get soggy when yeah. you're when you're out at sea with kids? Come on, that's insane. Actually, it, I did want to ask. So you said a lot of footage. How many hours of footage did we all have for the documentary we just shot? Wow! Oh, let's gosh. go around. Let's go around. Well, I had sixty days of footage plus ten hours of interviews with myself. I will say I lost about twenty days worth of footage 
because some of the bats escaped the box and covered the camera completely. For 20 days. <laughs> so they escaped the box and they covered the camera. Like they like... They fluttered around it yeah, constantly. That'll kill your sound. Yeah. Oh, I don't days. know how you did the regular sound. <laughs> Were you just yeah. doing camera audio sound? You're poor son of a bitch sound guy. <laughs> I had a sound man holding the boom for 60 days. <laughs> he for sure had to have a setup. He did not have to hold that thing. No, when a man is pushed to the brink, <laughs> he can do incredible things. Mothers can lift cars. Fathers can lift cars. And a boom guy can hold the boom. Do you want to give him a special shout out, say his name? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's clear in the documentary that we can feel a sound man being pushed to the brink. Yeah. Well, I'll say I loved your doc, and I didn't know how you chose what you chose because it felt like you were cutting basically at the most interesting part. Like it was about to be interesting, and then you'd cut away to the next day or something, you know? Yes, I am a bit of a tease. <laughs> I like to take people into what what they believe will happen and then subvert it by cutting away. There are, I believe, 15-hour segments of me trimming my fingernails and only a few of me learning how to drive. <laughs> wow. I, I mean, I I'm say... just dying to know about your life. Like, what does your every day look like? Because you, you seem like you thrive off of pushing people to the brink. It sounds like. Yes, every morning I wake up, 6 a.m. I head to the coffee room that oh. I have. Oh, coffee The room. kitchen? <laughs> it is a wondrous place. <laughs> There's a sink and an oven and a box that keeps my food very cold. It sounds like a kitchen. I it think. is the room where my coffee is made. Mm. And then I have a sip of the coffee and I retire to my chamber where I sleep the rest of the day. <laughs> I awake again at three in the morning and I write. You have your coffee, you go to bed. <laughs> and then you- <laughs> So you wake up at 6 a.m. <laughs> you make a cup of coffee, you go to bed. One sip. One sip. <laughs> One sip Go so ahead, as man. to not disturb the slumber that must follow. <laughs> this is, of course, during the winter months. Mm. During oh, the summer, yeah. it is the midnight sun, and I do not sleep. I live on an island off of Norway. Whoa. 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 What's that called? Mm, little Norway. <laughs> In the little that Norway. Makes me, this makes me really interested in what everyone's day-to-day -day is. Oh, yeah, sure. Kyler Byler? Kyler, well, yeah, I would love to go into it. Um, so basically, wake up early, you know, drink some coffee, and then it's hit the surf. It's hit the surf as quick as possible. Then after hitting the surf, you're out there, and you're just praising everything. You come back in, get a smoothie, get a sandwich. Do you believe in one god or more? Oh, me, I love <laughs> the idea of a lot of gods. For me, I think it's so cool, like the idea like water god. <gasps> Oh my gosh, you're the god of the water. You control the seas. Fish god. Whoa, you're the god of a fish. You're literally the god of a fish. You Do know? you believe in multiple gods? I believe that man is his own god. Mm. And it's something that I believe comes through very clearly in my work. Wow. Yeah, I didn't get that as much. I didn't get it. It just looked like a man struggling in a glass box, yeah, I would sometimes say th learning how to drive. I would say I think the bats won. I think the bats won. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was a clear message that the yeah. bats won. The I bats thought won. I thought I took away like, wow, bats are kind of stronger than I thought. Yeah, and you, you look perhaps... like shit at the end of it. <laughs> Do you perhaps think that as a filmmaker that is what I wanted you to think? Well, can you tell us? Is that what you wanted us to think, that the bats beat you? Do you perhaps think... That as a filmmaker, I made you think you thought that okay. so that later you would examine that maybe you did not. Now I don't like this. I don't like when a dog. <laughs> now you don't. I don't like this. I don't like what's not to like. <laughs> I don't like when a documentarian is making me think something and then telling me to not think it. I just want you to just lay it out there. I I, I don't want any manipulation happening. The facts are the facts. The bats want. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
That is true. The facts are the facts. It was a clear ending that you even said at the end, the bats won. Yeah. I thought that's what we were supposed to walk away with. And that is the pedestrian interpretation of my work. I am yes. not a pedestrian. I am an ocean man. I'm a surfer. <laughs> Jesus okay? Christ. I am not a man who would ever walk a lot. Do you think you <laughs> killed your friend? No, what? Maybe, though. I don't remember. Wait, you really? don't want to be known for walking? <laughs> I hate that stigma. <laughs> it's a the gross... stigma of what? I'm a surfer. I'm not a pedestrian, okay? And I hate uh, that word, and if we could just stop, that'd be great. Every well, man must cross the street. It is a fool's endeavor to... Unless you to have that. a longboard. Do you ever think about that? Do you stand on your longboard as you cross the street? Sometimes, but mostly I'm bending over you know, to pretend is, I'm on a wave. This is difficult for me because I agree with Augusto, <laughs> but I can't ever say that. You know what I mean? Because Kyler is clearly wrong, but I would never want to be on the same camp as him. You fear what... <laughs> You see, I am holding a mirror up to your very inner being, and you fear that. Why do you fear that? Oh my God. <laughs> I do. I agree. I agree with Augusto, but I'd never tell him. <laughs> oh, I would never tell. Him. I would never tell him. And to address the rumors that I was the one that killed my friend again, I don't know. There are no rumors that you guys killed. Can I your believe friend. you have there created ru the rumors. <laughs> yeah, there are rumors that he drowned. All I'm saying is, if you guys saw it, you might maybe think I did it, well, can, and I was convinced a little bit too. It was confusing. Can you give us the facts? Who, who are the suspects? Who is? Who do you think could have done it? And <laughs> I'm just curious. Okay, so, well, okay, so it's my friend I mentioned before, yeah. Fart, uh, it's Air Gong, uh, Ta Fart. Tati? No, Tuti is the guy who died. Okay. He's my bro, we know each other for a long time. So Air Gong, Fart, uh, Jacob, Bumpy, He's the guy who can freaking shred, but also has a dark side. And then this girl named Kerf, and she's like a crazy surfer chick, and she's great. And then the only other thing that we could come up with was there was something swimming in the water nearby. Okay. But mostly we were one of those five. So we were trying to figure out by watching the footage that I had and like kind of in a round table, like who did this? And people came in with a lot of thoughts. You know? It was so crazy the part in your doc where you make everyone say their alibi and they're like in the water. Yeah. With and it, you. it was crazy because like I say, like I say, like my alibi. So I was standing in the water. I was in the water. I looked up at this guy. I saw Tutti take the white wave of his life. And then I don't remember what happened. The next thing I know, Tutti's gone. And I just got yelled at because Eric Gaughan was like, dude, you weren't looking up. You weren't looking up. You were looking to the side. I remember that as that big thing passed under you. And you said there's a big thing in the water. Do you perhaps remember hearing a large chomp sound? Not as much a chomp, but a thrash for sure. Oh, you heard a thrash. I heard something. There was something. And I, we all suspected that was the killer. <laughs> I My assistant was telling me there's a large online community that they're doing something called the shark theory. Have yeah. you heard about this? About no, the and we hate that. <laughs> I don't even think it's an online thing. I think it's just like a known thing. Like I believe um, it was the, po well, the the police's opinion. It was an online thing spread by the police, the mm. Long Beach police. Can um, I ask you a really forward question? Please, I'm because all at for this point, questions. I'm like, we're about the truth. These people at this table, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I'm just yeah. gonna ask. Do you find that the true crime documentarianism uh, community is so so competitive that you took your story and made it more complicated than it actually is so people could try to put clues together. Because I will say, what's a huge part of crime docs is people uh, trying to solve it. And it feels like you're forcing me to solve something that doesn't need to be solved. What? I don't understand a fucking word you're saying right now. Easy, buddy. I don't understand. Are you calling me a pedestrian? No. I Whoa. don't walk a lot. Whoa. I roll. We're not saying I that. ride and I roll. You know what? I will say <laughs> something. I will say something in, in Kyler's defense. You know, that one section where you do reveal that every single surfer was carrying a big knife. <laughs> 
<laughs> that did throw me a little bit. I should have brought that up. Yeah, so everybody had a big knife. <laughs> Why did you guys have such big knives on the wall? You don't know what's out in the ocean. It could be anything. <laughs> right. So you knew so, you were in a bed. <laughs> so, so, so what kind terrifying. of thing could it be? But there, everybody was mad at Tootie for the night before. What are you worried that you have to protect yourself from when you're holding that knife? Yeah, just maybe say some things. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of one right now. Okay. What, what makes you hold that knife? Is in the water. Dude, have you read The Reef? There's like monsters and shit. There could be anything. And I've seen giant tuna. Have you ever seen a sunfish? A sole? Gargantuan. Yes. Oh, we're Huge. not getting anywhere. I've seen a lot of sunfish. I made a documentary on nets. And <laughs> I filmed a lot of sunfish getting trapped in them. You know, nets are very versatile. Can I ask you? I, I find that you, um you I, I've looked at your catalog of films before mm -hmm. this uh round table and I, I did too and i and i notice um you don't act with the humans a lot you love things and like just like stuff you know who else loves things humans we're surrounded by things right now this table is a thing that ring is a thing those earrings are things humans if not interested in each other are interested in things that's all we are we're people that like things. We're 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 Ariel. We're Ariel from the Little Mermaid, uh, holding on. Who's he? What's it? That's a fork. You know what I mean. And the fish <laughs> part of her doesn't like the fork. It's the human part of her that likes the fork. <laughs> Whoa! How do you know? <laughs> how do you know that though? What? It could be the fish part that likes the fork. Fishes don't like forks. Fish, I every fish I've seen in the ocean loves shiny things. Absurd. <laughs> <laughs> A fish has absolutely no use for a fork. It's Ariel not... is a girl. <laughs> Ariel in the movie has yes, no Augustus. use for a fork either. You, okay, Ariel she's again. a freaking mermaid. She likes it because it's shiny. That's because she is a girl on the inside. <laughs> she was born in the wrong body. Guys, I don't want to come to blows here. Okay, let's not get let's not get That's aggressive. That's like my documentary. Mine too. Well, I actually did see yeah. your trailer for your documentary. And I thought it was insane. You really, when you say you exposed these kids, dang, man, these kids were ruthless to each other. They were. They yeah. were really mean. I was surprised how often they just doxed each other. Yeah. <laughs> that, I guess I used yeah, the word. They're calling you SWAT all the time. <laughs> Matthew SWAT. should not have been doxed in the way he was. <laughs> it, oh, all we of have his a huge community of fans that hate the way Matthew was treated by the school principal. So yeah, the principal doxed him, <laughs> spread all of his information online. And then I think your community was the one that turned on him. Yeah. The craziest scene when during the race that one kid gets swatted and the 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 boats drive up. I thought that was a great trailer. Yeah, I thought, the, dang. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, that that competition they go to in Costa Rica is huge. And you guys ever find yourself chasing a story and you are you are in the like biggest stakes you can feel and you don't have any say in these stakes. You don't know what they're doing. Like I was like, wow, it feels like the tension is so high and I don't know what the fuck's going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. yeah. You just couldn't understand it because you don't know the rules. No, <laughs> when they said yeah. she kept breaking, breaking her ankle. I was like, what is that? And they went, the, the anchor. Mm. Was there other any other terms you just didn't get? Because it's been oh. three years or four years that you've been filming. You're immersed. Years, right? Oh, yeah. I've been on sea with these kiddos for so long. And I'm barely understanding sea words. Uh, there's um, rang them in. What does that mean? Rang them in means you want some water. See, that doesn't add up for me. So it's a question? <laughs> yeah, so rang them in? Do you want some water? Sure. Do yeah. I say yes? <laughs> if you'd like. There isn't like a sailing term for yes? No, you just say yes or no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's just crazy. These kiddos crazy. Anyway. Did you get in, uh, close to any of your subjects? That's the big documentarian question. Wow. Oh, if you yeah. know, we got to it. It's yes. the line, right? Do you, yeah, do you step tough. over into getting to know the people that you're following? It's yeah. very important that you keep a yeah. partial, an well, impartial view. Did you get to know the bats at all? Oh, yeah. Did you have any weird things? I still maintain that the bats were a minor part of the documentary. <laughs> oh okay, so. But I got to know myself <laughs> very well. Wow, okay. like how? Well, that's an interesting question, Augusto, right? Because you're the subject, but you don't want to get too close to the subject. So yeah. yes. how do you get close to yourself? Like, what did you learn? I had to establish boundaries between myself. I could not talk to myself. 
for more than two hours a day, or else I would be getting too close to the subject and the movie would be compromised. <laughs> what did you do all day? You were the lead of your movie. <laughs> If you if you examine the footage, I was sort of pacing back and forth, singing great American show tunes. Oh yeah. And occasionally, occasionally swatting away a bat. <laughs> I feel like most of the time you're swatting, especially at night when they would get hungry. <laughs> it was a lot of swatting. Also, I just cannot, I have to dive deeper. You just cut to you learning how to drive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was a One of the trip. hardest cuts I've ever seen. Just by yourself in a car. You've made a glass container out of the car. You desperately learning how to Clearly drive. Clearly in a snowy parking lot in winter. <laughs> yes, I did escape the glass tube for just a moment. The box became a tube, became a parking lot, became a man learning. So I guess like was the box like maybe the perception of what yourself, you thought you were at. Wow. No, that part was a box. <laughs> the rest of the movie was me trying to figure out who I am. What did you figure out? I figured out that I am a wonderful singer. What? A <laughs> loving father. You have kids. Oh. <laughs> I forgot my favorite part was when you sang Don't Rain on My Parade to get the bats out of the way in front of the camera. <laughs> That was actually really crazy because I was like, this has to be staged because they all slapped themselves up against the, the back of the glass. It's <laughs> like, because Whoa. they were so impressed. It was not the smell of my mouth. It was... <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone thought it was the smell of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, that would be weird if bats were so grossed out by the smell of your mouth, they slammed up against the glass wall. Well, I'm sorry. I've been told by certain people at this table that I reek. I, so okay. part of me suspected that the animals were angry, did not enjoy the smell, but no, they were just overcome by the power, by the vigor. Of my alto voice. You know, you know was, what? He sounds like I've been trying to figure it out. Yeah. He sounds like uh, like one of those AC units or heater units in a hotel room <laughs> <laughs> that you don't, it just starts, you turn it on and you're like, oh, I didn't know it was going to make all that noise. I'm trying to get to sleep. Yeah. See, I was going to say he sounded like, you know, in West Hollywood when you're walking and it goes, wait. <laughs> yes. That man on the was my father. Do not speak of him. <laughs> Whoa. That was My a, father ah. recorded the wait voice on a telegram. <laughs> what? A telegram? He wrote it down, <laughs> he sent it off. That's your father? And then spoke it aloud. Wait. It was him. The guy at the crosswalk that goes, wait. And Antonio Vermicelli? Yes. You did a, you did in, a 40 part did documentary 40, about that. On this. telegrams, yeah. Yes. I, I learned a lot about that him. That was him. Yeah, he was really, really talented. God, 40 part him. telegram doc. Yes. It was what I used yeah. to watch to go to sleep. It was great. Oh, it was it's fair. the only footage I have of my father. You're not joking me, are you? Uh, do you take it as a compliment? Yeah. What's wrong? Joking. Why would I joke you? I love sleep. I, okay. I don't understand how anyone could sleep during it. There's so many interesting parts. Oh, yeah. You sleep after because they wind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I thought it's just you've got the most suit. Can you just do a little excerpt of your voice that you talk in when you do your documentaries? Because sure. it honestly just knocks me out. Sure, yeah, I can, I can, it's, as long as, as long as you guys listen to it. Oh, will you document what happened here today? I could do that. With your voice? Okay, yeah. great. On a nice summer day, four talented documentarians walked into a studio and they started talking about their lives. They used their microphones. They sat on chairs. They put their hands on tables and they drank from glasses. They had microphones. They okay, had my screens. turn, my turn, my turn. Okay, well, let's- Your turn. I'm gonna talk- <laughs> oh, 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 oh! You know, I figured it out. It's not your vocal <laughs> tone, but it's the pauses you take in the middle of each word. Oh, I'm not offended by that. <laughs> okay. Okay, here's my take on what happened here today. Oh, it's your documentary voice, Giga. I'm gonna document what happened today. Here we okay. go. Four people. One dream. My life would suck without you. 
Oh, the guy on the left making the posters. The, the, the Augustus, surfer murderer, the big story. That was in a documentary at all. That f- <laughs> That's fascinating because we That's- never heard you narrate in the Netflix doc, <laughs> and this scene is quite the eye-opening you, experience. Well, I'm, I'm just showing you that uh, there's different styles. That's there the are. style of the Netflix docu series. Yeah, yeah, no, it totally. Is. I get it. it I get certainly it. Is. Yeah. Well, so, how would you narrate today's events? Four men enter. Four men leave. Changed. <laughs> the bats. The bats. The bats, <laughs> the bats, don't rain on my parade. Deep alto. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Incredible. Nice. You just love to add bats to everything you do, but when we ask about them, I you don't hate even it. remember saying bats. No. no. Did no. I say that? I no. have no memory of it. You said bats. All right, all right. So this is just like my documentary. Here we go. <clears throat> Imagine. You are awake up and you go surfing and then you're invited to do a podcast. And when you show up, one person is off, but you don't know who. And it could even be you. Let's hope this gets solved. It's time. So yeah, that's basically. Do you script it when you do it? No, we go. We just shoot the shit. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, can I take a like lot of suggestions? Yeah, totally. I take a lot of suggestions. Totally. Yeah. Guys, what's next on your docket? What are you making? Well, I'm really excited to announce that everyone in my Discord has been asking. <laughs> everyone has been cl- clamoring for what I could possibly be doing next. Everyone's like, "What's the next thing? What's the next thing?" And it's not a thing. It's oh, a type of food. <gasps> Look Aioli. out. Aioli? Garnishes. Oh. oh. I, 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 I couldn't do aioli. Oh, okay. I told you. I couldn't do aioli. It's too complex. I don't know how to cut how size How long it. is the garnish, Doc? It's going to be 75 parts an hour each. Wow. Because garnishes, and we're I don't want to spoil it, but garnishes technically go back thousands of years. That does make sense to me. Yeah. It feels like any food would have a garnish at any point in time. But Why? And how? Because they're good. Garnishes are good? Yeah, garnishes are You sound great. like a 1400s person. Oh, <laughs> Garnishes God. in the 1800s, reviled. Oh, garnishes in the 1900s, God. parsley. I'm ar- Mostly. <sighs> ah! oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. I'm, I'm, that's how I treat my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Lady Kitty must love that sound. My Lady Kitty likes for me to do that sometimes. What are you up to next? I am going back into the box. Oh, no. Oh, God. This time, not. <laughs> Augustus, don't do that to yourself. <laughs> you don't this need time, it, not for a movie. This one's just for me. Oh, God. I'm going to hang out in there oh, with cool. a couple of my furry friends. What kind of animal? Mm, small. Okay. okay. Sort of flutter, flutter guy. Okay, he wants to say bats, but he can't get himself to do it. Kind of a dark color. If you like bats, admit you like bats. (laughs) Be honest with yourself. What kind of bat? I am in love with the bats. There, I said it. (laughs) I love bats. I refuse to hide any longer. (laughs) Finally. It feels so good. I'm going to make a bat movie next, and I'm going to be proud of it. Oh, like Batman. No. (laughs) Okay. Please tell us. Kyler Byler, what are you up to? Well, actually, this is crazy. After the success of my surfing movie, they reached out, and I'm going to the the front of war. They're putting me on the front lines to make a war document. The front of war. The front of war. (laughs) Who's they that reached out? Oh, a lot of people. There's guys called... um, this documentary company called Front of War, and they sent all these guys to the Front of War, and basically I'm gonna do a doc, like a true crime mystery, who killed um, the people at the Front of War. Interesting. Yeah, and I know it seems obvious, it mm-hmm. seems obvious, the ba- the other guys, the other guys that are against him, but you never know, you know? So you think someone's about to kill someone, and then another guy's going to sneak up and stab him from All below. I'm saying is you never know. Okay. you got to look deep into these things. And then after that, we're going on this hunting trip to uh, try to hunt a shark for some reason. Okay. Yeah. I think film that. 
No, that's kind of a personal thing. No, that sounds good. No, I don't want to <laughs> film that. No, that sounds good. That to sounds me good. Too. That sounds that boring sounds as hell. Us no, all like, training to hunt a shark that may kill it, have killed our friend. No, that sounds good. And maybe film you guys surfing, holding knives while you're at it, because that yeah. sounds so cool. Oh, I filmed that. You guys can check that out. It's, it's surfingninjas.com. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Just free content. Thousands of hours of us doing katana <laughs> shit on surfboards. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. What about you? What's your next thing? Uh, well, um, I'm, we're, of course, doing season three of sales. Great. Yeah. And um, I'm also doing, uh, there is a toddler play place that has a little, you know those ball pins? With a bunch of balls. Yeah. The kids are getting really competitive with the balls. The toddlers are. So we're going to follow them to an area of Florida, Jupiter, Jupiter Florida, um, where they bring all these toddlers together and they see who could chuck the fastest ball. Wow. Oh, I, I heard about this. This is called Get More Stupider, right? Uh, no, that's, um, that's my other project. <laughs> They go to Jupiter to get more stupider? I thought yes, that's what it was. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Netflix is sending you to space. Oh, I mean, Netflix is sending me everywhere where there's a competition and a kid willing to cry. And that's space, too? <laughs> oh, yeah, you better believe it. They got middle schoolers up there that want to make it to mathletes so badly. So you guys really think my friend was killed by a shark? Yes, man. Release the bats. What? Oh, oh, my God. God. oh, my God. This has been Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists answering the question. Now that's why they call it show business. Good night, Hollywood. So these posters. Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists is an improvised Hollywood roundtable podcast created and performed and produced by Kylie Brakeman, Jeremy Colhane, Angela Giratana, and Patrick McDonald. AOAOAOA is a Sugar 23 podcast. Michael Mayer and Michael Sugar, executive producers, Liam Billingham, producer. Production support by Angelo Ristano and Anthony DeFrancesco. Music is by Gabriel Ponton. The opinions expressed on this podcast do not reflect the opinions of anyone who works on it, not even the performers, because this is an improvised podcast and we're stupid. Full video versions of AOAOAOA are available on YouTube, so please like and subscribe and leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, Hollywood. <laughs>